Hi everyone, I'm Ken, the inventor of the CTKS method that shows where smart money is buying and selling. Each day I seek to give you an edge in the market using professional smart money rules and thinking based on my more than 30 years experience in financial markets. To assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. If you want to get the Institutional Edge, please subscribe. You'll find we have one of the best communities on YouTube. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 0.07% to 2373. Ethereum is up 0.39% to 1629. Across the past week, the crypto markets have been quite red. There's been a lot of negative sentiment. I'm going to share three trades today. I've been showing for the past week that it is possible to take money out of the crypto market and the returns that people might consider. But trades do not always go as anticipated. So I wanted to show you some trades on Singularity Net. The crypto market is incredibly volatile. And when I got into AGIX, I placed several buy orders down. I didn't pin the exact bottom and I didn't pin the exact top. But the concept is I, I felt a reasonable sell level was at this 44,922 mark. And did I hit it? Yes, I did hit it. But the concept is what happened next? AGIX decided to go absolutely ballistic and rally through. Now, do I feel bad about this? I'll, I'll explain. The first thing we need to understand, if we wanted to invest in a risk-free return, what could that be? Well, we could get four and a half or even 5% by putting in money for one year. When do we get the, say, 5% back? Well, we get it back in one year. What if we could get back a little bit more than 5% in three days? That probably wouldn't be a bad investment. And that's exactly what happened with AGIX. If we add all of these buy levels up, and this is just layered buying, we'd get $998 and $92,883. And we can see the return up here, 1049.82714. What is the difference? It's 5%. And the annualized return is probably one of the lowest that you've seen just recently. But I wanted to show you what happens when a trade goes bad. Yes, bad trade. You're probably saying, Ken, you didn't do too well on that at all. And I agree. So what did I do? I didn't cry about it. I went back into AGIX and saw what I could do. You can see here, when price was coming down, I placed a buy order at 44,807. That's this line here. I later sold it just for a 5% return. I thought that was enough. And I actually took out another buy order, 45,567. And this is this one here that I later sold up here. I just wanted to actually cash this one in so that I could show you what happened in the past 24 hours. And what was the result of this? If we add these two buy levels, we get $1,000. And if we add these two sell levels, we get $1,090. So you can see that this was a 9.14% return in 10 hours. The first trades definitely didn't go as anticipated. If I just overlay the trading history, you can see that I literally missed out on all of this big upsurge and it was quite eye-watering. But the concept, did I say, oh no, I've missed out, I need to get in. No, I didn't. I waited till price came down. And what is all this about? And this is important to discuss. A lot of people, when they see price take off and they sell, they'll actually buy on this spike upwards. Now, the problem with spikes is that spikes generally and typically reverse. And that's what we talk about inside the masterclass. You've got to be really careful with spikes. You want to use them for your advantage. You won't always pin what you want to pin when it comes to price action, but don't be hard on yourself. The game isn't over until it's over. And guess what? The game is never over. 
When you're seeking to make returns from the market, you need the knowledge, you need to know what to look for. I use all the knowledge of the masterclass to do these trades each and every day. One thing that a lot of people ignore, especially inside the crypto market, they ignore the main markets. Please do not do that. If you do so, you'll actually be costing yourself money. You need to look beyond the crypto market before you look for opportunities inside the crypto market. Inside the masterclass, I also share my links for my live charts so that you can look at them anytime you want. When we look at the main markets, the fear gauge, the VIX, we can see that the VIX has been coming down. This has been creating a bit of a bottoming action in the major indices. As well, we've seen yields pretty much stall out. Bond prices try to create a bottom. We've also seen the dollar just slightly back away and gold just increase just a little bit. We've seen a bit of a surge in oil prices, but they're still under resistance. And when we look at risk appetite, junk bonds and high yield corporate bonds, they are definitely recovering, but it's not the recovery that we would be hoping for. We would be hoping for a lot more positive momentum. And just beware, across the crypto market, a lot of cryptos are at resistance levels. When you look at the crypto market, please look at Bitcoin first. Bitcoin actually dictates what the alts do. We can see that this smart money buy level has been holding up incredibly well. Bitcoin is currently 23187. This buy level between 23142 and 23226 has been holding very, very well. But will it continue to hold? So far, the momentum inside Bitcoin has been quite encouraging. We've not actually broken down from this particular resistance line. You can see that we've popped above it and we're trying to make this resistance support. That's a plus. What we need to do is to see price get over at least the $24,000 mark. We know that we control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And it's really important to not do revenge trading. The CTKS code forces us to think about the three-dimensional movement of the market. The market can go down, it can go neutral, or it can go up. And we anticipate all three dimensions at once. That is what it is to be a professional. And being a professional, you can take money out of the markets anytime you want. There are a lot of market dynamics that are very important to understand. The shorts and the longs are one such dynamic. And I go into that in TG34. We can see at the moment that the shorts are entering the market, causing the longs to get liquidated. That's why we're seeing negative price momentum. We can see in the past 24 hours, there's been 55.51 million in total liquidations across 23,985 positions. And when we look at total liquidations across the past 24 hours, we can see about 67% were long liquidations. So that's negative price momentum. And looking at the past 12 hours, that's about 69% long. Again, negative price momentum. What about the past four hours? Even more negative price momentum at 86% long, total liquidations. And what about the past hour? Even more, 96% long. There's a lot of negative price momentum inside the markets at the moment. And what is that doing? Of course, negative price momentum is driving down price. Does that mean we can't make money from this market? You already know the answer to that question. You can make money, but you must know what you're doing and you must be flexible. I wanted to take you through another trade on Staffy. The ticker for Staffy is FIS. I want to show you another trade that didn't go as anticipated. I bought at this 72.22 mark. I put my initial sell order in at 8882, uh, 8, 8, but it didn't actually reach there. We had a really good kick up in terms of price, but the retracement didn't eventuate in another rally. So I needed to move my sell order down. 
Generally, I don't touch my sell orders. When I put them in the market, I just leave them there. But I noticed something in FIS, in Staffy, that actually had me a little bit concerned. Last time, we actually broke under like this. We had an enormous retracement. And there was a bit of potential fluctuation, but fluctuation is not guaranteed. So when I saw it coming down, I basically got out. And this is a case where I was still in profit and I was happy enough to get out of this particular trade. I just want to zoom in here to give you a better picture of my logic. Sometimes you'll find that you just have to abandon a trade and sometimes you can't abandon it when it's in profit. Sometimes it will be at a loss, but I just want to take you through a thought process. What I did was I noticed that the last time a bottom level of support was broken through quite traumatically. We did have a retest and price sold off quite significantly. I saw that price was weakening. The trade was not going in the direction that I had anticipated. The power was not inside the crypto. And it's important to get to know the personalities of what you actually trade. Here, I actually got out <laughs> in, around near the bottom. And people would say, Ken, you got it wrong. You should have just waited and just pinged that top. Of course, if we had a crystal ball and I knew exactly where price was going to, I agree with you. But we don't have that crystal ball. And it's always important to be kind to yourself. I could have definitely waited, but events that happened yesterday just didn't give me the headspace to do that. When we talk about being kind, it's incredibly important to be kind to yourself and to be kind to others. Actually, if you're not kind to others, you are not kind to yourself. And the problem with that is, if you beat yourself up over trades, not getting every single bit of profit out of a specific trade, you'll just end up losing money. Kindness is a very, very important thing to have as a trader because it makes you level headed. Kindness is a very underrated superpower. I thought it would be good to talk about kindness and how important it is, not just in life, but inside financial markets. Maybe we could specifically talk about what a lack of kindness actually costs people. This is a bit of a different way of looking at it, but I think it's an important topic to cover. I'm really looking forward to your comments. Let's have a look and run the numbers how this particular trade turned out. We can see that we invested $200, 199, 2996, 199, 2996, and we pulled 215, 6275. This is just these two numbers added together. And what did we actually see? That was about an 8.2% return in a little under two days. So it probably wasn't that bad. Could I have gotten more? Absolutely, I could have gotten more. But when I looked at the particular trade, it just wasn't going in the right direction. So I said, I'm out of here. And that's perfectly okay to do as well. Remember, it's very important to start small and scale. I don't want to do these trades with very large sums of money because what it actually does is it scares a lot of people out of the market. They think, well, I can only make money if I put a million dollars on a trade. I've actually seen some YouTubers put literally a million dollars on a trade. And I think, you're crazy. And they tend to buy at market. And if you're buying at market on a million dollars, of course, leverage. That's even more crazy. Don't worry about impressing other people. Impress your own funds. I was going to say bank account. But when you talk about crypto and banks, you know, sometimes they don't go together. It's hard to imagine that just a couple of weeks ago, Bitcoin was so up. Now it's down. A lot of people have reached out and said the greatest gainers and the greatest losers are really, really helpful for them to identify opportunities. Thank you to everybody who let me know. I'm here to make your journey through crypto as profitable and as painless as possible. And we know crypto can be pretty painful. There is a cry in crypto after all. And for all the people who reached out and sent their love and healing wishes to Kate, Thank you so much. You're just such beautiful people. I really appreciate it. And Kate does too.
The greatest gainers yesterday were XEM, STX, SSV, FXS. Wow, a lot of S's and X's in here. I often see this actually. There's kind of a pattern. I don't know if people can't figure out if it's FXS or XEM or STX that they're trying to go after or AGIX as in the case or SNX. But keep your eye on it. It's fascinating. But what do we actually see? NEM or XEM did really, really well and then just faded into oblivion. A lot of people would have been caught up with this big surge in price and they would have become trapped. And we can see Bitcoin coming down at the moment. Ooh, that's not looking good. It looks like it's violating our smart money support level. Let's look at that later. But the concept is you must be careful of these spikes. You want to actually get in when they're normalizing and that's easier said than done. When we look at STX, and we've been doing very well off STX recently, we can see it's just consolidating. But as we see Bitcoin come down, what's going to happen to STX? In all likelihood, it's going to come down. We can get inverters and we'll be looking for those when I actually change these to the top gainers today. But I want to take you through the top gainers yesterday. What did we see with SSV? SSV was pulling in the retail crowd and then it obliterated them. Be very, very careful of this. Remember what I did with AGIX. I saw that I missed the rally, but then I bought when it was retracing. I felt there was sufficient momentum inside AGIX to support this, and there was. But I could have been wrong. If I was wrong, I would just get out. What can we see with FXS? FXS was a top gainer yesterday. It was the fourth top gainer. It continued to do quite well. But as we've seen, Bitcoin is coming down and FXS is also coming down. Frack share. What a cool name. NEO. What did we see with NEO? A very good upsurge after this retracement, but then it cuts support. What happens when there's a cut in support? Negative price momentum. Be very, very aware of this. What about AGIX? AGIX is still holding up very, very well. There's a possibility to ride AGIX up. But personally, I love to turn trades over because I love those obscene annualized returns. But you'll find your own way inside the market. Don't worry about what other, do, other people do. Just do what is right for you. Synthetics, SNX, so many Xs yesterday. We can see it's being supported quite well, starting to break. We would anticipate it coming back to at least this level, if not further down. Just keep these things in mind. LDO, Lido was doing very well and broke support. In this breaking of support, we expect a bit of a retracement. But if we're getting negative price momentum out of Bitcoin and it's not an inverter, we could expect further downside. So what are the top gainers today? The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, we can see AGIX is still there. But this negative price momentum inside Bitcoin is weighing on it. What do we know from the masterclass? No alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Gravity is absolute. It, couldn't, it can escape it for a little while, but it can't escape it long term. There's many, many nuances to these rules. It takes a long time to learn how to apply them. Immutable X, IMX. We can see IMX was doing very, very well. But what's happened with Bitcoin's gravity? It's pulling it down. What about FXS? Frack share. We can see the negative momentum inside Bitcoin, just retracing it. But FXS is still under good levels of structural support at the moment on a very short term time frame. What about EOS? It's coming up to a level of support, but it could retrace back to about this level. So just bear that in mind. If we get a steep sell off in Bitcoin and we start to lose that structural support, and that is possible because there's a lot of negativity out there. But we don't care because there's so many opportunities inside the market at all times. And I'll keep on sharing these trades with you just to prove it. Synthetics, we can see synthetics coming up, but it's starting to break a very short term 
a structural support line. If it does this, we would expect it to at least come down to this level. So just be aware of that. Masterclass students, it's very important that you revisit the 10-5-10 fund. We could see a lot of negative momentum inside or not a lot of negative volatility inside Bitcoin. If this is the case, you want to be layering in your 10-5-10. But what I've done for the community channel is I've actually released the 10-5-10 video from the coffee club. If you go to buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS and the link is in the description of this video, just go across to posts, click on posts and you'll actually see that down here, all the way down, I think it's the actually the first video. This is released to the public. This is a really, really good video. It's got a lot of really secret tips and techniques that you can actually use to become more profitable. The 10-5-10 rule is very, very important at the moment. Getting back to Maker. Maker can actually shine in times like this, but be aware of Bitcoin's negative gravitational movement. It is affecting it. It's still affecting Maker. You can see it, but it's slightly out. It's a potential inverter. And when you look at DYDX, this is why I always say, be careful of Bitcoin's gravity. Look at the Bitcoin's gravity first, because as Bitcoin was coming down, what happened to DYDX? It came down as well. You have to be very, very aware of this. And Quant, also one of the greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, it's being subjected to Bitcoin's gravity. Turning to the greatest losers in the past 24 hours, and this is from yesterday, I noted that the greatest gainers and greatest losers were all selling off yesterday. That's not common. That could actually be a changing of the guards type scenario. And what we've seen, the weaker are getting weaker at the moment. The losers are actually piling on losses here. This is why we want to pay particular attention. But notice with Clayton, it actually did a bit of a jump up, a spike and a spike down as well. So you've got to be careful of these spikes. We love spike trading, but you must, must have the knowledge. I do all my trades from the knowledge that I've shared inside the masterclass. The greatest losers today, right now, are LDO. Phantom, FTM, ICP, AVAX, TWT, BAT, Atom, and HBAR. One thing to always bear in mind that the greatest gainers become often the greatest losers, and the greatest losers often become the greatest gainers. I think I said losers then. I meant losers. Okay, what we can see with LDO. LDO is coming to a level of support, but just take a note of Bitcoin's gravitational pull. LDO cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. So a little bit of caution would be advised. Setting your buy orders down lower would be a good thing to do. Phantom, it's actually behaving quite with a lot of weakness at the moment, as is ICP. We can see AVAX sold down before Bitcoin's gravity showed the weakness that it did. This could be a forward sign for us. So keep our eye on AVAX. What about TWT? It's coming down with Bitcoin's gravity. We note this all the time that the particular alts, the top 100, they generally move in pretty strict alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. That's why I'm focusing on the top gainers and top losers. I think it gives you more information. And when you combine that information with knowledge, you can actually make profit. We can see BAT coming down. What do we notice here? Bitcoin's gravity is absolute. It's pulling everything down. Adam HBAR as well. Does this mean there are no opportunities in the crypto market? Of course not. There are always opportunities, but it's where you buy that makes you the money or loses you the money. I'd like to share one more trade with you. This is TruFi. TruFi was a bit of an animal yesterday and I saw across 10.5 hours, the buy level and the sell level. 
I made 46.95% return. But I didn't want to show you this one first. I wanted to show you the bad trades. Yeah, bad trade. I wanted to show you how you can actually deal with things when they go against you. And I wanted to show you that first. You can see the annualized return has become so obscene, it's minuscule. You can't even read it. Did I sell the exact top? No, I didn't. Did I buy the exact bottom? No, I didn't. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. Please take the pressure off yourself. It's so important for you to just be chill when you're trading. Please don't get emotional over your trades. Look for a system and look for a way to sensibly get in and out and ride the momentum of any specific project. But to do that, you're going to require a lot of knowledge. I received a really beautiful email from a masterclass student who's just finished up the masterclass. Congratulations, my friend. And they actually said that the Positive Excellence Real Wealth was a real game changer for them. And it is. It's a very, very important thing to focus on. And I'm so happy for them as well. I would like to think of it this way. When we talked about fear, there were such fantastic comments and we'll go through a couple of those. The, the idea is that you have a board of directors in charge of your mind. Just like a Fortune 500 company, you have a board of directors and they are, if you have fear running your company, running your life, they are anger and doubt, shame and guilt, blame and conflict, regret, addictions and unhappiness. Wow, what a jam-packed board of directors that is. It doesn't sound like a very, very good board of directors. I think you should fire those people. After all, they work for you. If you have courage, you have empathy, worthiness, forgiveness, kindness, learning, action, boundaries and meaning, success and happiness. Wow, that sounds a little bit better than the fear-based board of directors. And this is actually why we have the CTKS Creed, because our minds are generally geared towards fear. They are not geared towards courage. Thank you, everybody, for your fantastic comments yesterday and your well wishes and love to Kate. It's just so heart touching. Thank you so much, everyone. Rajat said about fear. Fear drives most of the retail mindset from entering into trades and exiting trades. It's a very, very good point. A very big thank you to Art as well. Art says, I think fear is probably the most important thing to understand if we're going to be a successful trader in any financial market. We need to understand our own emotional response to market fluctuations and we need to understand when fear is ruling price action in the markets. Fear is equal to uncontrolled emotions. On extreme red days, the fear of loss is very evident. And on extreme green days, fear of missing out is also very evident. Thank you, Art. One thing that we can see with Bitcoin, when we have these big red sell-offs, that's a huge amount of fear. What about these big green buy-ups? That's a lot of greed coming into the market, but that's fear of missing out. This is fear, uncertainty and doubt. And you can see just how important these CTKS zones are by understanding where the price action can actually stop in market. It's a, about as close to certainty as you can ever get. What we've actually seen, and you can see it by the volume down here, we had an enormous amount of selling and that was caught by this smart money buy level. And don't forget, objective dynamic market structure. The, the dynamic part of it is very important. Tomorrow these levels will all shift around. But the one thing that we've seen, all of this sell volume couldn't penetrate this particular buy area and we've seen a lot of sell pressure and it's still managing to hold up. But of course it's a lot weaker. So just bear in mind what's ha actually happening inside the market at the moment. Thank you, Vanessa, for your very kind comment. Jaylink said, fear creates panic, fear, uncertainty and doubt, FUD, 
FOMO, fear of missing out. Fear will destroy any profits in financial markets. It's a very, very good point. Thank you, my friend. Dr. Ash also had a fantastic comment. Fear in trading financial markets is like a fog that clouds judgment and obscures opportunities. To navigate successfully, one must learn to see through the mist and trust in the CTKS method. Very nice, my friend. And I think a beautiful thing about the CTKS method, we trust it because it actually shows time and time again that it is correct. It's an incredibly powerful methodology. And Crypto Turtle, price moves in waves. Fear actually creates the up and down movements inside financial markets. Beardy definitely put on his philosophical helmet today. Markets are based around human fear. Absolutely true. That gets us to do the wrong thing at exact times. Smart money wants you to. Since graduating the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass, I'm not perfect, but I've been heading towards the right direction of financial freedom. Thank you, my friend. And thank you also to Beardy for your very kind generosity. Beardy has put forward the Beardy CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. If you're interested in applying for the Partial Masterclass Scholarship, the link is in the description of this video. The Masterclass represents 30 plus years in financial markets and it's all about knowledge transfer. Participants of the Masterclass know exactly why I put the Masterclass together. It's all about making sure that I can transfer my knowledge across to you. Thank you, Sinman, and thank you also to Dinesh. To paraphrase Dinesh's comment, when Dinesh started trading, he wasn't quite sure about the markets and how different things intercorrelated. But now he's done the masterclass, he's using spot trading, and he says, I am totally relaxed regardless of which direction the price moves versus my trade. That's the ultimate state to get to. Well done, Dinesh. If you're new to our CTKS global family, please feel free to reach out and just to say hi in the comments. You'll quickly find that we have one of the best communities on YouTube. Wabi Sabi shared some incredible insight. Fear forces decision making. Fear forces action or inaction in a direction you may not have necessarily chosen and you were not acting from confidence. It's part of the human condition to always have fear. The key is just to control it as best as you can. If you have a methodology and a rational explanation behind why you do things before you do it, that is fine. That's not really fear. That's the application of a system. We have such an amazing global family. Each day, it's just such an honor to share this time together. Thank you, everybody, for your very, very beautiful comments. As a global family, there are many people going through life pullbacks. We could say life moves in waves, just like prices do. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know that our global family's love and healing thoughts are with you. The sun will come out again. You're just gathering strength for your next life rally. And you can just see how beautiful our global family is. It literally is a global family. And it exists on YouTube and it's open to everyone. Thank you again for your beautiful and kind words. Life throws curveballs at us all, but it's very important to keep up your positivity in life. The CTKS Creed is designed to actually do that. They're daily positive affirmations for abundance, financial success and happiness. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you tomorrow. Take care and bye for now.